Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to a dome wrestling draft. Yeah. See, yeah. this is this is something different because we haven't done this in a couple of years. Because like mm. usually we have like an annual roster raffle slash draft show where a couple people get picked. Um, but figure like because we just came on like I mean it's been a couple months, about a month or so now, a little over a month, but we just came off Bees and Seedings Five, mm. which arguably is one of the greatest shows we've ever done. It really was. So it's like, how can we like? So we here at Dumb Wrestling, the board of dire- board of directors, if you will. Yep. We've got like we've put our heads together. It's like, how can we follow that up? Well, it's like a certain old Irish wrestling man once said, "It's time to shake them up again." Yeah. And we're not just having a couple picks this time. We are doing a full roster reset. Yep. Like. There are the best way to reset the whole scenario is to literally pick everyone all over again. Literally, and this is this is a this is something new. We didn't do this the last time we had a full roster draft when we had the brand split. Mm. Um, because like there were some some talent that were kind of off limits, like AJ Sterling and Viper Nakajima were two of them. The DSF boys weren't on the list, mm. and so, so like stuff like that. But no, you can't see this on my piece of paper. Well, you can a little bit, but yeah, everybody. Everybody, and all the men, all the men, because obviously the women have their own show, and we're not doing two women's brands. Yep, there's not enough time in a day. Yeah, there's but there is one exception, that being the commissioner himself. Yeah, because bless his heart, he's old and he's trying. Yeah, <laughs> so he, he, he's he he runs the business. He, he runs the wrestle. business, and he wrestles occasionally. He actually does a pretty pretty good job. Anyway, yeah, and he almost so, died once. Yeah, oh boy. Okay, so obviously, there's just there's just two rules here. Because number one, uh, talent listed as a tag team or stable, they have to be drafted as that. So, for example, the DSF boys, you're not going to see a DSF breakup because whoever picks DSF gets those three bastards. Mm. And I mean that in a nice way. Yeah, because I've already crossed paths with that big fellow once. Not doing that again. <laughs> but obviously, so that like because of that, that makes the, the draft pool of 46 draftees. So we get 23 picks a piece. Mm. So obviously, I'll be speaking on behalf of well, actually, wait a minute. We oh, have yeah. another big update here. Huge because, announcement. Huge announcement here because of you know, we here at Dumb Wrestling, we put our heads together, and also we kind of listened to a little bit of feedback from Certain people. Yeah. It's like all of you have advice and your suggestions. Not all of it is good. Some we take to heart. Some we take to some heart. Some we work into in another way, shape, or form. So this is actually pretty big because th- going forward, we are going to be taking the 2GW brand and the development show Genesis, and they're going to be merging into one brand hereby known as BCW Body Count Wrestling. Because, right. like, Terry Crew, GM Terry Crews, and Wooly, current RNG champion Wooly, mm. you know, it's like because we like obviously the Crimson Dojo. No offense to my brand, the Crimson Dojo is the the flagship brand of dumb wrestling, and it's like it's always had like the star power. I'm not saying 2GW didn't have star power, mm. but it's like you know like we're gonna try and freshen things up a bit. And try to keep up with the red brand. Mm. So so that, that's that. So I'll be speaking on behalf of the BCW brand. And Joe over there will be speaking on behalf of the Crimson Dojo brand. Obviously, And obviously the women are involved because the women have their own brand. Mm. So, so we've determined uh, before we went on the air. That since Joe went first last time with the first pick a couple years ago. I'll be going first. Mm-hmm. And this is huge because obviously people are more established now. And so I'm on the clock, as they say. <laughs> so with the first p- overall pick in the 2022 roster reset, the bo- b- brand of body count wrestling will be taking the genuine one, Eric James, oh. as pink number one. That is a strong choice. That's, That's a strong, strong choice. There's a lot of strong choices here. I'll be fair. But it's like mm. Eric James, the arrogant bastard that he is, mm. that th- that the talent cannot be ignored. Mm-hmm. So. 
Whew. So that gets that out of the way. Because mm. like, because I'm I was looking at this list and I'm like, who do I pick? There <laughs> there are several strong picks here. There's so many good people now. Okay, so that wraps it up for me. Okay. As spokesman for the Crimson Dojo, our first initial pick for the new roster is a man I am very familiar with in spirit. He is a fellow fightman and a fellow enjoyer of one such... Damn, I had a whole fucking thing lined up. <laughs> fucking our first pick is none other than Wooly. <laughs> what? Yes. We pick Wooly. I I have I have great high hopes for Wooly. I what? I, <laughs> what? Yes. I am 100 percent serious. I might need a minute. <laughs> I actually might. Wooly? Yes. Did you see what he did at Beast's Seedings <laughs> twice I mean, in a row from two different sides? I mean, yes, but he has the heart. He has the heart. I mean, you're not. You're not wrong. There's room for improvement, but we can make that improvement. We I have mean, the technology. Also, I'm not gonna say that. That. Because obviously that didn't mess up my draft pool at all. That just caught mm. me. That caught me supremely off guard. Mm -hmm. I told you, 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 you would be surprised. I mean, all I knew was like you said, I would be surprised, and you, and you told me it wasn't boat cop. Mm -hmm. So anyway, okay. So anyway, moving on. Pick number two for BCW. Wow, I like my draft pool is still wide open here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But um, let's see. Okay. So for the second overall pick for BCW, I mean, this goes without saying, this guy is currently the man, the current reigning undisputed champion of dumb wrestling, AJ Sterling. Oh, okay. The game changer. Yeah. So this is looking good for me so far. I mean, AJ, great talent. Current undisputed champion had a man. I'll tell you, it's like he had a heck of a year in 2021. King mm -hmm. of the Ring, defeating uh, Reyna and Delgado and John, defeating Ace to win the undisputed title, Re beating the Marvel mm. at Beasts and Seedings. Who the who the who the f? I'm gonna try and keep this clean. Who the f saw that coming? All right, <laughs> we didn't. Absolutely not. So AJ Sterling coming to BCW and bringing the undisputed title with him. So, so far I got I got two champions. Yeah. Well, you have one champion. Yeah. <laughs> we so, can't discredit Wooly anymore. Yeah. Pick number two. Pick number for two you. for the Crimson Dojo side. I think. Well, I'm gonna have to scoop him up before he gets scooped up for me. But um, we have to go with practically the face of the brand. I have to, of course, take my side and pick the almighty Viper Nakajima. Solid pick. <clears throat> Which is interesting. Because, because if AJ is going over to BCW now, I have to I have to scoop up my boy. But also it's it's very interesting. We have to you know figure out because Viper is also the well BCW now, the Intercities champion, because mm -hmm. he be, he became that champion after defeating uh, Je the outgoing Jeff the Vegan. Mm. So this is interesting. But overall, a solid pick. A very solid pick. Mm. Multi-time world champion. Basically won everything there is to win. Yeah. Single-handedly saved Christmas. Single-handedly <laughs> saved our company. To, well, <laughs> basically, because, like, obviously, like, you know, it was Viper and the commissioner that thwarted the dump threat. Yep. He he ended 2021 with a championship win, so this could be on the up and up. Yeah, he could be getting Dread Samurai. Mm. All right, Ooh, the Dread Samurai. I like that title. You came up with it, did I? <laughs> yeah, like like years ago. I don't remember that. Yeah. at all. Wow. Huh. 
Anyway, nickname aside. Mm. Uh, all right, pick number three. Again, draft was wide open here. Mm. I don't want to to sit here too long. Okay. Pick number three. And dare I say, this could be a very good pick for me. Mm. I'm going with one Jonathan Worcester. Oh, yeah. Okay. Picking up a big boy. I mean, got to get the head. I mean, I got Eric and AJ. They're kind of like, like, kind of lightweights, maybe light heavyweights. We got to get a big fella in there. And Mm -hmm. John. Solid pick. And 90% of the big boys are like some of the best talent we have. Mm. You know, probably the greatest way of the warrior champion that's ever, there's ever been former mm. rumble winner. Mm. So he knows how to win. And that's what I like. And had one of the most solid debuts in the company as well. Mm. Along I mean, with a certain other member of our roster that is exactly. That's a, that's a rivalry for the ages right there. Mm. But so Jonathan Worcester appropriately coming to body count wrestling because like, if anything if anyone can accumulate a body count oh it's it's the samurai seattle right there pick number three for you okay number three for the crimson dojo i f- i do i also need a couple heavies because they are some of our be- best breadwinners mm-hmm. but i also feel like I'm going to need to scoop up a team early on. Uh Oh, I got a bad bad feeling about this. The Crimson Dojo will be happy to, to assimilate the squad of the DSF boys. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a great pick. Mm. That is a value pick. I feel, because I feel like as as unlawful and unruly as Delgado is, he he makes moves, he makes waves. This is true, and, and Mendoza and Pinales are no slouches either. Because like when I when I say value pick, it's like they are. It's like I mean, you look at all the all the championships that those hooligans have won. Mm. Delgado being a a six time world champion. Uh, Mendoza being a for Genesis champion, Penales being RNG champion. Obviously, they're current fun time friendship champions. Yeah, they just need to learn to stop ganging up on people and getting disqualified. But god damn it, they were literally next on my list. <laughs> they were <laughs> good. It's like they were literally next. I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay. Pick number four for me. Let's see. Okay, I don't really like go around because it's an alphabetical order, but gonna go with another, another great pick, another big guy, and we kind of uh, alluded to him a few seconds ago when talking about John. Mm. Oh, but, I see. But um, so with pick number four, Body Count Wrestling will select Raccoon. Is the name's Raccoon, and it rhymes with Doom. And whoever's on BCW is going to be hurting all too soon. Again, another man who can accumulate a body count. Because mm. indeed, you look at John and you look at Raccoon, they both had very similar debuts. Like they were running through people, mm-hmm. and then they ran into each other, and they kind of just traded wins there for a bit. Yeah, it was a clash of titans, so to speak. So Raccoon will be coming to Body Count Wrestling at pick number four. Hmm. All right. Number four for the Crimson Dojo. See, Crimson Dojo is all about style and hype and set play. And for me, we need a good hype guy. And I feel like the best hype guy we can we can have is none other than the Polish guy. Oh, okay. Mm. Not who I was expecting. But again, a solid pick. Mark that down. See, I thought you were going to go with somebody else, but mm. a pleasant surprise. I mean, Polish guy wears red. He's mm. going to the red show. Yeah. So it only makes sense. Mm. 
multi-time uh, minimum wage champion. Yep. Former tag champion. Another former Rumble winner. People yeah. forget that. He won the Rumble one year. Yeah. Yeah, he, he really did. Pick number five. Now, see, I have, like, there's, there's, I'm at, I'm at a fucking fork in the road. There's, and there's three ways I can go with this. Mm. All right. I, I got it. Pick number five. Yet again, going with another big guy. Mm hmm. Because, you know, body count wrestling. And this guy has, again, accumulated a body count. So, body count wrestling selects Aaron. Oh, okay. Aaron will, will be coming to BCW. I mean, for, like... He's I'm also sure a decorated individual. Yep, former world champion, Rumble winner. I mean, mm. and... His I mean, choke not, used to be the most dangerous thing our brand... That's how he accumulated his body count. They're, like, he's had over, I think about... Close to 30 victims when it comes to that hold. Yeah. Including some very prominent names in this company. Mm -hmm. The old Genji hoodie. The, <laughs> the master of moisture. The warden <laughs> yep. of wet. The, the landlord of liquid. Ugh. The guy who eats ass, as I said in one, one match. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. I randomly just remembered that. Aaron, pick number five. Aaron. My actually, he was my number one pick before. Yeah, yeah, he but, was. But obviously, it's like there has been a lot of other people who have been significantly more successful as of late. So, no offense to Aaron, he's still a great talent. His he's power still has since dropped a little bit. A little bit. Because people have been learning how to deal with those submission holds. All right, pick number five. Who you got? Okay. To compliment my DSF boys, I feel like I would be amiss to include possibly the greatest tag team champions we've ever known. Oh, no. So the Crimson Dojo hereby picks Power 80s. Uh, somebody had to. <laughs> I knew you weren't going to. Somebody had to. <laughs> uh, so the 80s will be stampeding. All over the Crimson Dojo once the again. Crim Hitting them with all the classics. It's the Cosby show that nobody watches anymore because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's a reason why our belts changed. Yep. <laughs> I mean, okay. All things considered, Power 80s is a great pick because they are a great team. Mm. Because they are put electrifying, if not always successful. And they have heart. I'll mm. give them that. Pick number six. There's a few names on here that I'm shocked have not been selected already. Mm -hmm. But. All right. We're going to move away from the big guys for a pick or two. Because I feel like my, my brand is not 100% complete without this talent. Oh. One of the greatest to ever step through those ropes. And also the current minimum wage champion. Oh. BCW selects Ace. At pick That's number six. Very solid pick. I mean, he just beat Polish guy. And Polish mm. guy is one of the best in that division. So. We will have to fix that. So Ace, the church man. Mm. Dad man 2.0. Will be coming to BCW. <clears throat> All right. Who you got? Six. Uh, let's see. Now I have to actually start thinking. Um, so the Crimson Dojo will continue its quest for greatness by recruiting another one of our great um, lightweight champions and possibly to reunite for better or worse with his old homies, we pick Urena. Wow. That is, I mean, that's a great pick. Mm. The greatest Genesis champion there ever was, but also a very volatile situation, potentially. Mm -hmm. Like you said, he's going to be on the same brand as his, as his former homies. Yeah. I feel like there's some uh, unfinished business there. Cause I mean, Urena did beat Delgado once or twice. No, he didn't. What I remember he didn't. 
I could have sworn he beat him at he least. He might have beat him in a tag match. Oh yeah, that, that might be what I'm remembering. Also, but... like because it's um I should have said this at the, at the beginning of the show, but regardless of his draft status, uh Delgado is still number one contender to the Crimson Dojo title hmm. because he won that right at Bees and Seedings. So right. Okay. But Urena, hmm. that's a great pick. It's like might have some interbrand warfare over that minimum wage title. Mm-hmm. Reina versus Ace, re- yeah. reigniting that rivalry. Moving on to pick number seven, and like, I will say this: it is honestly criminal, and we ought to be ashamed of ourselves <laughs> for not picking this guy sooner. I mean, if it's who I think it is, like, what more can they do? This is true. So, pick number seven. Lucky seven. BCW will pick the Mass Marvel. It's like, it's, it's almost criminal. It's like, <laughs> anyone else who like watches the show is like, oh, they're going to pick him number one. Easy. It's like, yeah, he's the best, but he is the most established member we have. Like, he can do nothing else. This is true. Except he's lose, already... like, 200 pounds and go for the minimum wage title. He'll just, like asexually reproduce so just like stick out his arm chip and then off I'm... the old block and have that grow into a mini marble yep but the marble the god amongst me- the the demigod of dumb wrestling the great mm. guardian the mass marble coming to bcw as this draft is going well for me there are probably the greatest number of bodies behind him than anyone else all right lucky seven Who's going to the Crimson Dojo? Lucky number seven. I feel... <clears throat> Gonna have to bring back an old friend. Okay. Yeah. So, another... Another one that has risen to greatness and continues to strive to be the best, who is mighty in his own right... The Crimson Dojo selects the mightiest tiger, Robert Garcia. I mean, KOF 15. It's right around mm. the corner. Right around From the corner. When we're filming this. Yep. Solid pick. Another upper tier talent in the cruiserweight minimum wage division. Let's see. All right. Number eight. Okay. See, I'm once again, I'm at a fork in the road. And now there, there's two forks. All right. I'm going to go one way because I'm almost positive you're going to scoop this guy up next. Mm. But as far as my pick goes, number eight, whose name rhymes with eight? <laughs> of course. I'm picking Nate. I'm yeah. picking the dead man. <laughs> A very solid choice. You know he's got one of the, he's got one of the best finishers in the company with the worst name. Yeah. And the dad crab. And the dad kick and. And you know the daddy driver, the best move. With a, the worst name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to take a gamble. Okay. There's there's a number of new talents we've acquired over the this last couple of months that have started showing some pretty some some pretty promising results. <clears throat> so, right. the Crimson Dojo would like to welcome Beast amongst our ranks. Wow, okay. That 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 caught me off guard. Hmm. Not as much as Wooly. Hmm. I I see some I see some, some potential in that man. I mean, the only guy to make his debut and win a world championship. Hmm. That that says something right there. Indeed. You know, I gotta pick a tag team. Hmm. I have not picked a tag team yet. This is true. And I feel like this team, if given the right opportunity. They could make waves in that tag team division. Hmm. So with pick number nine in the draft, 
BCW would like to welcome the society. Oh, okay. Consisting of Lazarus Mitchell, Leviathan, and their big titty goth girlfriend, Elizabeth. Damn. Everyone loves big, uh, huge tracts of land. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> That that's actually a little surprising. I thought you would have gone with uh, the other one or one of the other ones we have. It's like I was looking at the tag teams, and there's a, there's a good there's a good few of them left, but I feel like the society really hasn't gotten a good opportunity yet. This is true. So let's see what they can do, and if I re- if I'm going to regret that pick later, which I probably won't. Hmm. All right. Crimson Dojo, pick number nine. Pick number nine. Let's see. Um, hmm. Okay. Here is here's another individual I have high hopes for. Who is uh, who also shares some similarities between s- some of my current roster. <clears throat> so, the Crimson Dojo would like to welcome Stone Cold Kenneth Bradley. To our ranks, the current warrior champion, man, it's like he he went through he went through a war at Bees and Seedings Five to win that belt too. That, that was did. impressive. But K okay, Brad continuously showing the heart to keep pushing forward and to succeed. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Current warrior champion. I mean, yo, K Brad is very familiar with the set play. Exactly, exactly. He is perfect for us. And also former claimer of the Warfenheimer. Although he was unsuccessful on his cash in. Can't, he can't have them all. Can't have them all, but that dude is doing well. So but I'm excited. At least you didn't go the way of Whoopi Goldberg. Good old Whoopsie Goldberg. I need to like balance out my my roster a bit. So I'm not I'm not gonna go with who I was gonna go with. I'm gonna go with somebody else. Okay. And BCW would like to welcome Rahumel oh, to I the see. ranks. Hmm. The big green freak. Yeah. He's he's been he's been on the up and up lately. Yeah. Ever since ever since he's got the, the knocked the fuck out by Blitzkrieg. Yeah. I mean, he was unconscious for two minutes and we had to call the match on him. Mm. This is difficult. Yeah. It's because, like, a lot, a lot of big names have been taken. Uh, do I? Do I dare? Hmm. Yeah, I think I will. Okay. So this, this might come as a shock. I mean, again. I don't think anything will top the shock. <laughs> Of you taking Woolly at number one. <clears throat> so, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared now. I'm, I'm trying to think of something to say, but I can't really think of anything. <laughs> so, I, I, for better or worse, the Crimson Dojo would like to recruit the. The father and son squad of uh, what? Eduardo, Eduardo Valencia and Juan Carlos. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting I'm putting my eggs in the Eduardo basket, but I mean, it's a, it's Juan a, it's Carlos a, is going to be also there. This is true because that that's that's why the rule was put there. Hmm. I definitely would not have picked him solo otherwise, because I need more big dudes. Hmm. And Eduardo, he's <laughs> he's showing promise. Mm-hmm. See, I could throw a curveball back back at you, but I figure I might save it. Okay. Because I don't think fucking you picking Wooly at number one <laughs> and you picking Juan Carlos at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hope okay. This doesn't come back to bite me in the ass later. I mean, it, like, all things considered, Eduardo is a solid pick. And let's not forget, Juan Carlos is also a former champion. (sighs) Much as we would like to. (laughs) Okay. So, okay, I think this this one's an easy one for me, I think. Okay. We're going to take Truck. Okay. We're going to take Truck at pick number 11. 
Because the simple-minded, flannel-wearing orange Jeff. <laughs> Good old orange Jeff. I forgot we called him that. Oh, man. Truck has shown promise, and hopefully he will continue to be on the up and up in BCW. Yeah. So, Crimson Dojo would like to take on Master Bo Raicho to our ranks. Okay. That is a solid pick. I mean, he, he's he been on the decline as of late, but who can forget that just magical run he had? That godlike performance. That, that that Royal Rumble that you had to crown a new Crimson Dojo champion and Master Boricho, he eliminated like seven people, I think. Yeah. And he, he went on he to was on a tear. He went on to beat John for the warrior title. Yeah, it was a so hopefully he can hopefully he can call muster up that the magic yet, again. yet again. Yeah. Even though our alcohol bub budget's probably about to skyrocket, but I mean, if he brings the results, then it's gonna be worth it. Just give him all the, the rice wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a few people on here that I'm kind of shocked haven't been picked yet. But I gotta I wanna make sure my roster is good but also balanced. Mm-hmm. So and also I you know what? I'm gonna take another tag team. I need another tag team on my show. Okay. And I feel like man, this might be a little bit of a given. But I'm going to go with the Pub Sharks. Okay. Graham Noble, Gareth O'Connell, the the Schlepp, the commissioner's buddies. Yeah. If you didn't pick them, I was going to pick them relatively soon. All right. Who you got? Okay. So next, say a lesser known but still equally as... Getting really lackluster with my fucking announcing. Well, to to join our fellow like-minded people, the Crimson the Dojo would like to call Alex over to our mm. roster. Good old th- yo. When is Crimson Dojo gonna get Perry's? The old New York and Mugga. You just need a subway in your arena. Yeah. <laughs> you need a, you need a subway system in your arena, and you need Perry's. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Fucking man, the Crimson Dojo with Perry's would be the sickest wrestling show ever. All right, so big man, damn. Again, like like you said about the pub sharks. Like if he, if Alex wasn't picked, I was gonna pick him relatively soon. Yeah. Fucking John's trying to go for the pneumatic punches. Okay, fucking <laughs> fucking even moment thirty seven. I almost said rule thirty four. I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> that's definitely not it. <laughs> I get my numbers that's mixed up. Not it. You know what? Hmm. I'm actually surprised, although not really, that this person is still on the list. Hmm. An up and coming talent. And, you know, if he keeps going the way he's going, he's going to end up one of the greats. Hmm. I'm going to go with Cart Boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Solid pick. Also, going to have to wonder what we're going to do with. Uh, the Genesis title, maybe mm. a I have a feeling that a title unification match is on the horizon. Potentially, yeah. But six, nine, 12, yep, thirteen. So, who is unlucky thirteen for you? Unlucky thirteen should have been Juan Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but by association, that would also have to be Eduardo. This is true. Hmm. I feel like I need another big dude. There's a couple left on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It had to happen eventually, but Crimson Dojo would like to re-welcome Vig the Barbarian. See, that obviously that's a great pick. Mm. That's a fantastic pick. That is a Marvel level pick. Mm. However, I feel like you should be ashamed. <laughs> It's like I wanted to give like like my my men, my mentality is speaking like these guys are already established. We this know they're true. good. That's a very good point. That's a very I want to give other lesser established people a chance to rise up. 
Crimson Dojo Super drafts hot. their own world champion at pick number 13. <laughs> Let, let us just say it's like just because like just because you're drafted at a lower number doesn't necessarily mean you're bad. Yeah, because it's like you said, it's like people like Vig and Marvel are well beyond established, yeah. and we got to give the we got to give the the young guns a, a bit of shine. Exactly, that is exactly what so I. Mean. That is a solid solid pick. This is another given. This is another given. You know, given like you know people know what kind of characters that I'm fond of mm-hmm. and I'm going to go with another tag team. I'm oh. going to pick the psychos. I'm going to pick the hellfire empire. Oh, okay. What's Krieg and yeah. Ragnarok. I was actually going to go for them next. Okay. Whew. Wipe the sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Man, our, our, ta- our tag division is looking real nice. Mm. Better than that power eighties garbage. <laughs> <laughs> How many belts have they won? One. <laughs> yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think for a moment. Like, yeah, they won a bunch. Like, one. <laughs> one. Uh, well, you know what? There's only one left. So we're going to throw in the Sailor Bros, Sands of Papyrus. Okay, the Crimson Dojo. Poor Papyrus. He hasn't even debuted in the current game yet. Yeah. No, oh, the, the Scalar Bros. They're biding their time. Yeah. They're 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 waiting for their the chance to strike. Yeah, and, and Sans then, is great when he wants to work. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you just, like you know we'll just get hit by a blue attack. <laughs> yep. Got to be careful of those blue attacks or a gaster blaster. No, those mm. are banned. those are banned in dumb wrestling. Yeah, these things are far too OP. Can you imagine if Delgado had a gaster blaster <laughs> on a random oh, note? <laughs> that would be absurd. It just looked like a fucking bull skull and just. How do we gotta pay Toby Fox to make Delgado a secret boss in Undertale? <laughs> uh, probably a lot more than we have, <laughs> <laughs> which is anything at all. Yeah. Okay. See, you know, I'm going to I'm going to branch out a bit. Okay. And I'm going to pick somebody that I think has potential but I'm not super familiar with. Okay. I'm going to take Lieutenant Harmbar. Oh, all right. Cuz I saw him at Bees and Seatings and he did a heck of a job. And I think that guy has what it takes to hang in BCW. Mm. Okay, what you got? Uh, yeah, well, okay. I'll, feel, I, I'll go with somebody else that's been decent in his own right at okay. one point in time. Okay. We're going to go with Excalibre. Okay. Another solid pick. Minimum wage champion. Mm. I mean, one of the best in that division. That goes without saying. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with, again, I feel like this is criminal that I, I haven't dra- I haven't drafted this guy sooner. I'm going to go with Geef. I was wondering when you were going to pick him. going to go with Geef. Because, I mean, who, you can't go wrong with the Red Cyclone. If only he had strong. his actual SPD in dumb wrestling. Yeah, he'd be breaking the rings left and right. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have drafted him. So <laughs> we've already had our ring broken like four times. Yeah, and at least back then we had Santa to help fix it. Yeah. I heard Santa's back, but he's not on the payroll. <laughs> well, after what happened, can you blame yeah. him? Who you got? Next up, I feel like it's, yeah, it's it's also been somewhat criminal that this person hasn't been selected yet. So Crimson Dojo will take it upon themselves to welcome baby lesbian with his caretaker, Saul Kanan to the, you know, the old, that bovine esque daycare, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who could forget the show that Saul Kanan put on when he challenged for the RNG title? 
Oh yeah, I that one that. time he put. I heard he was like bedridden for like two weeks after that because he couldn't move. Mm. Not that I blame him because he he's, was actually he's doing, not exactly fit for the business like was, uh, the rest of them are. He was actually doing work, hmm. so as I'm pretty sure he tried. He tried, and Crimson Doge was all about heart. Hmm. And I mean, I was a baby lesbian. Like, we brought him in with like not the highest hopes for him, but man, that baby. That baby can became something big. Yeah. Former Crimson he, Dojo champion. He became the next big thing at the time. Yeah. <clears throat> Solid pick, though. Stupid sword tattoo, though. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a diamond sword from Minecraft. And Nobody he has, likes Minecraft. He has a sandwich on his pants. Yeah. Everyone likes sandwiches. I like sandwiches. Sandwiches are solid S tier. <laughs> Depending on what's in them. Mm. I mean, sandwiches can have anything in them. Provolone cheese? Hell yeah. Nah. nah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Peanut butter and mayonnaise? Hell no. yeah. Hell the no. Best combination. Hell no. I will fight anybody. This is it's not dumb delicious. wrestling food talk. <laughs> When is peanut butter and mayonnaise going to become a character in dumb wrestling? I, God willing. <laughs> the next big tag team. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, we're getting down to it. You know, okay. Another, another easy one for me, I think. Hmm. It's like, you know, before you were talking about hype and stuff. I see. And obviously... Who better to bring the hype to BCW than the hype man himself, Clambo Fiend? Hmm. Still wearing the crap com gear, even though he hasn't worked for Capcom and fucking God knows how long. Yeah, it's been a couple of years now. Clambo Fiend, the hype man coming to BCW. This is true. I have high hopes for Clambo Fiend. It's like he had a great run a while back and then kind of fell off for a bit. Hmm. Okay, who you got? I'm gonna take another uh not really a gamble, but more of like you know, we're gonna see how it goes, though he's probably not gonna be too happy with it. Crimson Nojo would like to draft over Billy. That's interesting. And see where that, that goes. It is it is a gamble. Mm. Just cause like Billy Billy can get it done in the ring. That's been shown several times. Yes. His win-loss record says a bit bit something different. It's a little, little to be desired. But who knows? This but could the be... Crimson Dojo shapes people into champions. This is true. And also, a bit of history here. You know, I don't think they've crossed paths yet, but Billy and Beast have history. This is could, true. Could be interesting there. Hmm. I can hear him calling bullshit from here. <laughs> yeah. Not sure he's too happy to be working in the same roof roof as Viper, but I'm not gonna say it's it's criminal that this guy has been drafted so late, but this guy has been a, a solid talent for quite a while. Mm. BCW would like to welcome Lord Potato. Lord Potato. Okay. To their ranks. I mean Lord Potato came in. And, like, again, like, I don't think, like, mu much of anyone saw, like, you know, promise in that guy with his antlers and rotund figure. Yeah. And then he had that just absolute classic match against Viper. Yeah. Which really put him on the map. Mm. So, Lord Potato is a welcome addition to our ranks. Mm -hmm. Pick number 18, I think, for you. Number 18? Well, I talked about him earlier, and I I didn't forget about him. I just put some other people ahead of him. But right. uh, like we said, it's like just because you're drafting late doesn't mean you're bad. Yeah. So Crimson Dojo would like to welcome Bag Boy Senpai to Yo Bags once again. Though his, Yo, you got the his place of work recently closed down. I hope he is still comfortable. Yeah, I hope he's doing okay. okay. Hmm. Still the best bagger I've ever known. Going with the triple B in your draft picks, I see. Because you've gone mm. bag, bag boy, senpai, billy, and baby lesbian. <laughs> but makes it easy for me for my next pick. Because I'm mm -hmm. also going to follow the B train. 
Bass Bass Armstrong. Bass Armstrong coming to BCW. Mm. Surprised he's going so late as well. I mean, it's like we said. It's just like I I put people before him. Mm. The like muscle spirit. Yeah. Again, that 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 tag team division. People better be on the lookout for that man because that those fun time friendship titles are going to be hotly contested. Indeed. And who knows? Maybe some new friendships will arise from this this shakeup. This is true. I mean, like you said, like Billy and Beast have history. Yeah. Friends come in all shapes and sizes and histories. Yep. Okay. Who you got? Well, let's see. Had to happen eventually. One of the greatest fourth place finishers of all time. Crimson Dojo would like to welcome the one, the only, Mike Ross. Reuniting with K-Brad? Mm. I mean, that's a solid I, pick. I just noticed we have a lot of FGC people in, in here. Now we do. We've dropped a couple, mm. and we still have quite a few. We still have a good handful of them. Okay. All right, this is this is relatively simple, I think, because this is another guy who has shown promise. He's a former champion. He's a great performer, and I feel like he'd fit right in on BCW. We're gonna go yeah, with Oh Cop's great, the dog food gangster <laughs> Troy Rucker. Damn, thought I had that one. <laughs> trying to trick me. <laughs> <laughs> and you almost did too. I was like in the middle of my sentence, and you said, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, because <laughs> notice I had to pause there for a second. I'm like, I was like, you know, he's got he's got problems, and you said that. I'm like, <laughs> underhanded tactics. From the ambassador of the Crimson Dojo. I, mean, I only said words. Words did not make you write anything down on your paper. Okay, who you got? Okay, so... Once again, this being... Uh, 20. Probably, maybe a little surprising, since this used to be my number one draft pick last time in a in a in a different time, but Crimson Dojo would like to welcome Kazuya Mishima back over to the roster. I mean, the head of the Zaibatsu. I'm trying to remember when, the, when we did the last draft. Was Tekken 7 out yet? I Yes, I do. Th- I think it was. Okay. Tekken 7 has been out for a long time now. Came out, what, 2017? Something like that. Okay. I, mean, I, I can actually check. I think it's been out on Steam for just as long. This might be considered out of left field. Oh. But BCW would like to welcome Lunell. Ah. Ah, yes. Also known as the Ultimate Voyeur. His alter ego when all of his power is unleashed. (laughs) Which has only happened like once. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it, it takes him a while to build up the power. Yeah, he's he's a, he's he's not all there. Eeny meeny miny mo. Actually, yeah. Well, in the same realm of last pick, we'd like also like to welcome Albert Wesker over to the roster. I mean, he's not been so hot as of late, but he's a great GM. Yeah. Mm, he's, he's a great, a great GM. G- he's a great GM. Yeah. In ring performer. Well, while ha- while being forced to limit his use of Ouroboros, he's not the greatest. All right. Actually, with that, that makes it easy for me for my next pick. He's going to get picked one way or another. <laughs> BCW would like to welcome Terry Crews. Ah, yeah. The old power man. Spokesperson of Old Spice. And... And who should have been Death uh, Doomfist? Yeah. yeah, and also former spokesman for Amazon. 
Oh yeah. That was a that was a weird one. Hmm. But Terry Crews coming well coming back to BCW. So like the GMs have been drafted. Hmm. I believe there are only two left. With your your second to last pick. Uh <laughs> Boy, what a choice. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to go with the aforementioned rug. Damn it. He is he's a champion in his own right. He was our longest running champion to date. Exactly. Again, it's it's just another case of uh, like, what else is there for him? What is, else is there for him to do? Yeah. You know? But he had been on, he has been on the decline lately. That he has. He's been putting on very good matches. It's just that his his signature submission hold is not as effective as it once was. Mm. So. so maybe he can refresh his power. This is true. I mean, he, he's gonna have some new vic- new potential victims. Mm. People who have not experienced that hold before. Yep. People who have not been encased in the bubble. Mm. Or felt the mess of the mess god yeah i forgot i called it that now there are two left you must make a choice i had i I had a feeling i i basically knew (laughs) that it would come down to this i mean i wanted to but my desire to have you pick him is much greater (laughs) So right. you have a choice. Who you pick now will decide who my final pick is. We'll take Boat Cop. Yeah, the man. The spirit of Freddie Mercury goes to a new brand to wreak havoc upon new foes. <laughs> Which means it made my hand hurt to write that on my <laughs> list. But that also means that the Crimson Dojo's final pick shall be our newest entrant, Triple X. Not saying that he's bad. He's just yeah, not established yet. We know next to nothing about him. He's, he's had one. Like, he's had yeah. one match, and to be fair to him, he had a, it was a very good showing for him. Yeah. So he did lose, but he did show. He, he did show heart. something in there. He showed heart. Yeah. So Crimson Dojo is all about heart. So, so maybe his future is brighter than it appears. But this is, this is true. I mean, he I mean, he's faced Robert. That's yeah. it. So it's Robert like is a, a well-established man. There is a lot of uh, I mean, you know, where Triple X come from comes from. Like, I mean, him and Beast have history. Him and Billy have history. So those are going to be rivals that could potentially be. Uh, revisited, and then obviously people like Bag Boy Senpai and Excalibre. Yep. So, I mean, what the fuck am I hyping up your brand? Because <laughs> we got the accolades, we got the history, the legacy. Our re- results speak for themselves. We have Boat Cop. Yeah, you know, Boat Cop's good sometimes. <laughs> he gets the crowd cheering, he gets the blood pumping, and then he loses. <laughs> So all the, all the blood just goes away. <laughs> so I got to say, this draft, I'd say, has worked out very well for both brands. Mm. I mean, like BCW, I mean, we got we got Eric, we got AJ, we have John, Aaron, Raccoon. We got Marble. Mm. And then your show. Yeah. Wooly? Yeah. Wooly. Yeah. Fellow combo man, fellow Virgil enthusiast. That. The man who has survived Blight Town. I, I'll go on record as saying this. That has got to be top three most shocking moments in right? all of dumb wrestling history. Mm. It's just like, you know. Ugh. We are kindred spirits. I mean, you took man. you took Juan Carlos. Yeah, I mean, we'll either make something out of him or throw him away. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But with that, I mean, hopefully you, you guys who watch this, hopefully it's enjoyable because this, this was like, this is big. Mm. This, this, like the roster, we're not going to do this all the time. Yeah. This is the beginning of a brand new season for dumb wrestling. Right. It's like, we, like we, we just came off bees and seedings five and we had to figure out some way. It's like, how can we follow that up? How can we just keep the fire burning? How can we be friends? How can we be friends? God damn it. <laughs> and then the fire went out when I drafted boat cop. <laughs> That's where all the air in the room just. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I think that's it for us. Yep. And we'll be back soon with another super show. Harsh Judgment 5. Yeah. Four or five. Harsh Judgment 5 coming up. And we'll see how uh, this draft affects things. So it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I'm liking the way both rosters are looking. So until next time, we will see you later. <laughs>